laying on of hands. Now, I want to look at three different uh, areas that the New Testament speaks about dealing with the laying on of hands. The first one is the laying on of hands is used to impart the Holy Spirit. Number two, the laying on of hands is used to impart and stir up spiritual gifts. Third, the laying on of hands is used to anoint for callings, wisdom, authority, and leadership. I like this last one. The laying on of hands is used to anoint with callings, wisdom, authority, and leadership. Yeah. Now, remember that I made the statement, the word only works for those who work the word. Work so many of the things that, that we're going to look at today, they will work in your life if you apply it to your life. Mm -hmm. Moving right along. I don't know. It's something about being in this open space like this. I just feel so free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Thank <laughs> you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, if you have your Bibles, I want you to turn to Numbers chapter 11. I want to I wanna lay a principle out about how God moves. About how God moves. <laughs> And while you're turning to Numbers 11, I want to kind of set the scenario for you. The people of Israel had come out of Egypt. They were traveling through, through the wilderness. And an interesting thing had happened when the children of Israel came out of Egypt. Because the scripture says that when they came up out of Egypt, a mixed multitude came up with them. A mixed multitude came up with them. And you'll find that in Exodus I believe the 13th chapter. Now, this mixed multitude were not Israelites. This, this mixed multitude, they were not of the people of God. They were, other, they were people from other nations who were also in bondage in Egypt. They saw a way out, so they decided to join themselves to the people of God so they too could get delivered from Egypt. So they were with the people, but they were not of the people. They were with the people, but they were not of the people. It shocked some people to find out that everybody in church ain't saved. Hmm. Uh huh. Oh, you're right about it. <laughs> it's a shocking thought, but it's true. It's true. <laughs> so they, they've come out, and this mixed multitude, they begin to complain to Moses and about Moses because they weren't, they weren't satisfied with how God wanted to make provision for the people of God. And in Numbers chapter 11, verse 4, it said, And the mixed multitude in their midst lusted with great lust, and the sons of Israel also turned and wept and said, Who will give us flesh to eat? You know that the children of Israel, they were being fed manna. Say, we remember the fish, the leeks, the garlic, the cucumbers, the pork chops, the steaks, the sausages, the liver and onions, all the stuff that we ate when we were back in Egypt. We remembered all of that, and our taste haven't changed. Of course their taste hadn't changed, because they hadn't been changed. That's right. That's right. <laughs> But now our soul is dried away, and there's nothing at all besides this manna before our eyes. God is feeding them with angels' food, and they're despising what God is doing in their midst. In fact, they can't even see what God is doing in their midst because their eyes are too focused on where they came from. It's a good thing there's nobody like that in the earth today. They can't go forward for looking backwards. So the people went around and they gathered, they ground it in mills, they beat it in a mortar, baked it in pans, made cakes of it, and the taste of it was like the taste mm -hmm. of fresh oil. Mm -hmm. 
But let me go, but, but let me go down because I want to hit this principle. Then I want to jump, drop, drop down to this land on the hands. Now, in verse 15, Moses is praying to God, and, and, and Moses says, and if you're going to part this way with me, I beg you to kill me at once. There are a couple times Moses had to intercede for, for the people because God was going to wipe them out. God got tired of their mumbling and complaining. <laughs> said, if I found favor in your sight and not let me see my misery. So the Lord said to Moses, now I want y'all to get verse 16 because this is key. God says to Moses, gather to me 70 men of the elders of Israel who you know to be leaders of the people and the officers over them and bring them to the tabernacle of the congregation so that they may stand there with you. Mm. And I will come down and talk with you there. Now watch this. And I will take, somebody say, I will take. God said, I'm going to take of the spirit that's on you. And I'm going to put it on them. Y'all stay with me. Moses, gather some leaders. Just don't get anybody. Gather some Gather some people that you know are leaders among the people. Bring them to the tabernacle of meeting with you. I'm going to come down, and I'm going to take up the spirit, Moses, that's on you, and I'm going to put the spirit that is on you on them. Because if the people are going to make it in, they've got to be of one spirit. That's it. That's it. That's it. I'm going to take, Moses, I'm going to take it a spirit that's on you. Now, let me ask y'all a question. What spirit was on Moses? The spirit of God was on Moses. And then God said, Moses, I'm going to take the spirit that's on you, my spirit, and I'm going to put it on them. But it's going to be on them because of their association with you. I'm just reading. I'm going to take that. I'm going to take of my spirit that's on you and I'm going to put it on them. I'm going to come down and talk and then say to the people, sanctify yourselves <laughs> because tomorrow you're going to eat flesh. You have wept in the ears of the Lord, saying, Who shall give us flesh to eat? For it was well with us in Egypt. Therefore, Jehovah will give you flesh, and you shall eat. Verse 24. Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord, and gathered the 70 men of the elders of the people, and set them all around the tabernacle. And Jehovah came down. God just changed my message. I don't think we're going to get to the land on our hands. Watch this. Jehovah came down in a cloud and spoke to him, took of the spirit on him, and gave it to the 70 elders. And it happened when the spirit rested on them, they prophesied. But they never did so again. God took the spirit that was on Moses and put it on the people, and the people began to prophesy. Why? Because Moses was a prophet. You can't have the anointing of a prophet and not prophesy. Neither can you prophesy without a prophetic spirit. And you've got to get that from somebody. Somebody said, oh, no, the Lord anointed me. Mm. 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 Thank you, Kendrick. Now watch this. He's going to use somebody. Mm. And somebody said, if you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. (laughs) So Jehovah came down, took of the spirit that was on Moses, put it on the leaders, and they began to prophesy. So now watch. But two of the men stayed in the camp. Now, these were two of the people who had been chosen by Moses, right? Uh 
So we could say 78 of them showed up where they were supposed to be. Two of the men stayed in the camp. So you have two people who were chosen who didn't show up. Y'all got the picture? Now I want to show y'all how powerful this is. Y'all with me? You're learning anything. Watch this. Two of the men, the name of one was Eldad, and the name of the other was Medad. Eldad and Medad. And the spirit rested upon them. Now, where were they? They were in the camp. Where, were, where was Moses and the others? They were at the tabernacle. So you've got God showing up at the tabernacle with Moses and the 68. You got two who stayed in the camp. They didn't show up. But when the spirit fell on the 68, the two that were in the camp, they also had the spirit come upon them and they prophesied. Because there is no, oh, there is no localization of God. You cannot box God into a place. Hallelujah. You can't box God in. Neither can you be among those chosen and not get what God has for you. The 68 are at the tabernacle. The two are in the camp. Spirit of God falls on the tabernacle. The two in the camp get the exact same thing that the 68 got. Why? Because they were of the chosen. It's good to be chosen. Glory to God. You just want to be up here near the anointing, huh? Come on. Chosen. Leaders. Spirit of God falls, they get it. So they prophesied in the camp. And a young man ran and told Moses and said, Edad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. Mm -hmm. Woo! Hallelujah! He preaching. Yes. Young man ran and told Moses and said, Edad... Eldad and Medad, they prophesying in the camp. Prophesying in the camp. And Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of Moses, one of his young men, go over to the mommy. One of the young men answered and said, my Lord Moses, make them stop. They prophesying in the camp. Moses, make them stop. Because they're not over here where everybody else is prophesying. They're prophesying in the camp. So Moses, make them stop. But watch what Moses says. Moses said, are you jealous for my sake? Would God that all his people were prophets, and that the Lord would put his spirit upon all of them. That was the heart of Moses. Moses said, I wish God would put his spirit on all his people. So I wanted to lay that principle out for you. God takes, I know this is hard for some of us to believe in America, Because we, you know, we're, 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 we're so individualistic and self-centered. And it's all about me, mine, and us. And we don't realize God is trying to redeem a world. God's trying to redeem a world, and we fussing about what we want. Moses said, I wish all of God's people were prophets. I wish all of God's people could see what he was doing. I wish all of God's people could speak the word and see it come to pass. I wish all of God's people would learn how to pray themselves through. Ain't that what you did? Pray yourself through. 